Welcome to this week's edition of the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. We are your host. He is the Stallion. I am the Enforcer, and I'm going to start this week off correct. Breaking news, the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast has officially filed an injunction against Lucha El Rey as of right now. Right now. Right now. Apparently, if you go to the go to the Lucha Underground uh, uh, Insta Twitter page and you're you're looking up their match from last night, it was uh, Willie Mac versus Johnny Mundo mm-hmm. in an all night long something something match. That's my thing. That's your thing. That's our thing. You can't. I didn't. I didn't receive a fax. I didn't get a, a teleprompter message. I didn't receive a text. I didn't even get a DM on the Twitter, Joe. Did you file the necessary paperwork? That would be my first question. I have. I uh, I contacted Impact. I asked them how to do that, and um, I, it's uh, it's it's on it's on the way. Okay, good. Uh, Did Karen Jarrett get back to you yet? Uh, no. All I've gotten is weird nudes of Jeff Jarrett. It's very very weird. Well, that's. <laughs> I don't think we needed to know that on air. It's weird. It's, it's, uh, okay. It wasn't a DM. It was a public message. It was so oh, strange. Uh, I was like, I don't want nudes of Jeff Jarrett. And, I don't think anybody does. And here we are. I don't think anybody wants to see that at all. No, oh, no, they don't. How do we? How do we recover from nudes of Jeff Jarrett? I don't think Jarrett? there's any way to recover. Eric, so we might as just move, <laughs> just move right along. Move right along. Uh, we appreciate you guys checking in this week. As always, we are the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. We are available to you from Damage 365 Radio Network. Hey everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the Bay Dollar Man, and you are listening to Damage 365 Radio. And remember, everybody's got a price for the Bay Dollar Man. <laughs> and the official podcast of ProWrestling.com. You can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, at all night long WP Facebook.com slash all night Facebook.com slash all night long WP. Did I get them all? That's it? Yeah. If we could just get a drop for that, so I wouldn't have to go through that every week and butcher it the way I've done. Maybe we could I'll cut it something out and post and then drop. <laughs> Maybe if we ever run into Ed O'Neill, aka Al Bundy, he could do a drop for us. That would be something. Yeah, I mean we can I'm sure does he makes appearances all the time, I'm assuming. Yeah, that'll be fine. In like uh, flea markets and <laughs> strip malls and things like that. You know the places you and I usually hang out. Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's cool. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to find Ed O'Neill at Subway at three o'clock on a Tuesday. We might find him at Gossip, right? That's uh, that seems like a reasonable a reasonable location for uh, Ed O'Neill and us to both be hanging. I uh, hang out. That's I not... plead the fifth. Okay. I know Roadkill might be there, but I don't know if Ed O'Neill's going to be there, right? Anyway, so everybody's sitting there wondering how we got on the topic of strip clubs and uh, Al Bundy, but I'm going to tell you, this week on the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast, we're going to have a, yet another installment of the five count, dare I say a topical installment of the five count. We're going to give our predictions for this Sunday's Extreme Rules pay-per-view, and uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of, um, uh, what's a good word, back and forth, maybe chitter chatter. There's a couple things, I don't want to go into Raw and SmackDown this week, do you? Uh, say, not, say what you're gonna say. Say it. Say no, it. No, it's inappropriate. No, no. Say it. it's okay. No. Um, I would say uh, censor yourself. Please. We don't need to go through the show in great detail. Uh, as far as the the uh, every single segment in match, yeah, I don't think we need to do that unless anybody wants to hear about Titus O'Neil and 
whatever. No. So, um, but there Titus were... O'Neil beating somebody that Apollo Crews couldn't beat. Yeah. Yep. So I think maybe we just hit on some of the the key, any key points that happened uh, in the two shows Monday and Tuesday as we head into Extreme Rules this Sunday. Um, I know you said you had a couple things that stood out to you um, in the shows this week. Yeah, there's a couple things I want to talk about before I get there. I like uh, I didn't uh, I caught a glimpse of one of the dirt sheets reports that uh, there's really no direction right now until SummerSlam, and in the meantime, what they've relied on doing is throwing in mixed tag matches and uh, multi-person tag team match to kind of fill time. And I feel like that could not be any closer to the truth. I mean, it's been a steady diet of, you know, just six-man tags, fatal five ways, uh, everything, and two-on-twos that are just made up on the fly. And I feel like there's no real substance to what we're seeing on Raw and SmackDown. Um a couple of things, I, I mean, like, like we said, really don't want to go through the show, um, go through the shows this week because there wasn't much on there. But let me let me ask you, on a scale of one to the first fifteen minutes of Saving Private Ryan, how much did you enjoy Alexa Bliss's "This Is Your Life" segment? That was a tough watch. Uh, <laughs> I think that was the consensus. Um, <laughs> I think you call them the, the drizzling poops? The so. drizzling poops, yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, you said that once, it, it popped me. It got me good. Uh, pretty grotesque, but yet accurate <laughs> yeah. description. I think that the tough thing about segments like that is if they, you know, they're set up and, and scripted in such a way where she's going to go through this whole long sequence of events, you know, to try to basically mock or make fun of Bailey, and they and she does a promo, and then she has these fake guests from Bailey's past and all these things so it's kind of scripted in such a way where it's going to be out there for 15 minutes and uh, you know to take up that much time in the show and if it kind of dies on a vine immediately there's really no going back from that right like it, as soon as it started it, a couple minutes in everyone kind of lost interest and it just kind of got worse from there as people waited for you know Bailey to make an appearance towards they, the end of it they and, waited for the sweet embrace of death during the segment yeah. show so unfortunately this one was not a home run uh, they've had Segments like this in the past that worked uh, and got a good reaction, you know, like the the Mick Foley and the Rock one from maybe twenty years ago, or uh, was I think a very a very popular segment. Um, even the Festival of Friendship thing from earlier this year with Jericho and Owens, I think, was much more well received than than something like this. It just did not play out very well. It was a it was a tough tough segment to watch unfortunately i don't really necessarily blame alexa bliss for that i think it's more just the material that she was provided to work with let me tell you something about alexa bliss everybody is on the alexa bliss bandwagon she's the greatest thing since sliced bread yada 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 it's because she's attractive in the ring she's serviceable don't get me wrong and she's got the 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 bitchy heel down pat cool but everybody I get this feeling that people think because she's so attractive, she could do no wrong. And I'm not saying this segment was her fault, but but they they weren't out there shooting, for God's sake, which means at some point they probably went through this segment in the back before, right? They tested this. They made sure they knew what they were doing. Who the heck watched this segment backstage and thought, you know what? This is going to get over. Who At some point, you have to go through this before, right? Well, I'm sure that they run through a script as far as letting the wrestlers know what segments they're going to be a part of and when. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that there's. I don't know how it works backstage. I don't think there's any sort of like you know dress rehearsal or anything like that during the day. They usually don't finish writing the show probably until you know the day of anyway. Um, but I'm sure that, that Alexa and Bailey and whoever else was involved was handed a script of what they were supposed to say and do during the segment during you know during the course of the day on Monday. And do you think at this point, when either of them read it, they look down, they're like, you know what? This is going to be a home run. I'm sure people are really going to enjoy this segment for the next 37 God knows how many minutes of their life. That was brutal. And then the problem, the, the, the biggest problem I have with that is you have that segment that probably takes up maybe 20 minutes in total. And then was it right after that they went to the, um, to the tag match, the uh, cruiserweight match? I believe that was a sequence of events. It might have been, yeah. So if you're sitting in the crowd... And you're watching this. You're not seeing wrestling. You're not seeing a good segment. So then you, you go through this 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 vomit 
That was the This Is Your Life segment. And then it takes another video package 15, 20 minutes to change your ropes over to purple. And then you have a cruiserweight tag match. There's no reason for the audience to be invested unless you're hoping that the audience is so excited to see wrestling in the ring that they're going to pop for everything. But that's not the case. And the, the, the tag match fell equally as flat as the This Is Your Life segment. And the cruiserweight suffered <laughs> from it. I think it was just... Poor everything. Everything about that was poor, and then it ruined, you know, pretty much the last hour of the show. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think I think oh. the cruiserweights have their own issues right now. Um, that whole division is pretty much lukewarm at best. I would say it's like they're it's really... frozen solid. That's yeah. it. I'm off. I'm shooting tonight. That the cruiserweights are atrocious, Joe. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know that I can. I don't know how. I mean, you could obviously the crowd was maybe a little cold going into it, but they never really seemed to do much to bring them out of it. Um, regardless of where they're placed on the show, it's usually a very quiet crowd during cruiserweight matches. Um, I mean, I, I don't watch two hundred five live regularly, so I, I don't want to speak to that too much. But I know on Raw when I when we're, I was, we're talking about that, there's not really many cruiserweight matches on Raw that get a great reaction that I can remember. No, me neither. Um, and I, I didn't watch 205 Live yet. I'm, I want to watch last week's because I believe it was um, Tozawa versus Kendrick in a no hold barred match. And I heard good things about that. But So while I'm on the topic of terrible things on Raw, uh, if ever I'm watching the show and I happen to see a Hardy Boys match, my next course of action... The Hardy Boys... Uh, I, I can't even call them the Hardy Boys. The broke, whatever they are. Matt and Jeff Hardy are uh, in the ring. It truly, they're very much showing their age. Um, the the in ring work, the physicality between Matt and Jeff Hardy and anybody is slow. It's plotting. It's full of mistakes, uh, and it, it wasn't just this week. Uh, just this week, it, it's been. I think it was maybe who was it again? Sheamus, Matt Hardy. No, the Miz. There was something with the Miz. It was a six man tag. This week, yeah, it was a six man. Yeah, it was, it was a six man tag. And um, Ambrose against the Miz, Miz and, and uh, Sheamus, Sheamus and Star, Star. Right, and Matt Hardy for. I, I'm noticing more with Matt than with Jeff, but he is. It, it's tough to watch in the ring. I mean. His move set, the you know, they're just very slow. They're not connecting, and they do not look good in the ring. Well, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I mean, there were some rough spots. I think just mistimed stuff at the end of the match on Monday, um, the six man. Um, you know, I mean, there. I think Matt's like forty one or forty two. And I think Jeff is maybe like 39 or something around those ages. So um, they've been doing this for a long time. I mean, I think I think Jeff's been wrestling. At least I've seen him on Raw. He was back on Raw in like 1990, in the like mid 90s. So they've been wrestling for a long time. So certainly they've slowed down from what they were. Um, Jeff had that obviously that bad motorcycle accident that kind of banged up or tore apart his, his knee, and he's had some issues with that. And Matt's had some issues as well, obviously just with age and. and and wear and tear and stuff. So certainly they're slowed down, I think, from what they were maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but I think that their their matches are pretty serviceable. And, you know, I mean, this match wasn't like anything like off the charts, but it was still pretty good. Um, you know, their ladder match at WrestleMania was good. They Obviously, the night before, they just wrestled the Young Bucks in a ladder match when they were with the Ring of Honor. So I, mean, I think they're okay. I mean, they're not what they were. But obviously, at the point in their careers, it's hard to you know put on these you know, twenty minute crazy matches with going through tables and ladders and, and all that type of stuff. But um, you know, it's okay. I don't think that their long term shelf life is going to be with what they are now, um, which obviously we've talked about before. You know, it's the the broken gimmick is really where it should hopefully land at some point um, sooner rather than later. Um, but they're just kind of riding the nostalgia wave, I guess, at the moment. Yeah, I, and I don't expect them to go out there and tear it up and make it look like it was in 1997, 1998, but the, the, there's just maybe a sense of urgency that's not there in the match, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of, I don't, not, not necessarily blown spots, but a lot of timing that seems to be off in the ring, and I, I'm noticing it more with Matt than I am with Jeff, and yeah, I mean, I know they're, they're 41 and 39 respectively, but... Put it in perspective, I mean, AJ Styles is, what, 39 himself? 
So it's and I'm not saying they have to do the things they were doing.